Hey everyone and welcome back to another Shadowlands video. So, classes have suffered through Battle for Azeroth and the developers are clearly quite aware of this and they really did stack their class panel full of digs at their past selves. They talked about the mistakes of putting core abilities into talents and doing that too much. They talked about pruning too hard and going overboard with spec identity in Legion to the point where they now feel that class identity was lost. So, they sure do know the emotional core of the problem that players really have there. And and that's really what they spent their time on. They were getting cheers out of the crowd with, I'd say, some easy wins, like mentioning the return of Auras. What is a little bit less clear, though, is some of the specifics. Although it does seem like rather than revamp the classes, they're instead going to add a whole bunch of stuff back in. So to get a better handle on this and of our new Shadowlands progression systems, let's get into what they actually said in the deep dive panel. So the developers plan to do a big unprune and to give us more class-wide abilities. For an example, a new mage who's leveling up won't be a frost mage or a fire mage, they'll be a mage, and that will give them access to, say, both fireball and frostbolt. And the idea is that specking into a spec will just add a bunch more around that spec's theme, but unlike the current game, it's not going to take a bunch away from you as a core mage. Now, this may lead to a bit more hybridization of toolkits, letting the flare of multiple specs shine throughout combat. Now, they aim to do this with weapons as well when leveling, say, giving a warrior a bit of shield game play and 2H gameplay, or maybe giving shamans primal strike so they can actually use their mace. So little things like that. So as you can see, that's going to tie into the leveling system quite a bit, but we're just going to have to wait and see more details. Now, on other things, they're also bringing back a number of class mechanics. The examples provided were poisons, auras, perma totems for shamans, and then warlock curses. Now, I should know that Ian mentioned Alter Time in the past, but they did not mention it here. Suffice to say, I'd love Alter Time to return. Now, they're also bringing back some old abilities such as Eye of the Beast, Kill Shot, Ritual of Doom, Shattering Throw, and uh, Challenging Shout. So that's, again, pretty cool, pretty good to see, but, uh, you know, that's not all. We'll see more, and there's also some other things they're doing, such as class-wide abilities coming back, and examples of those are Raise Dead, Shiv, Death Coil, Frost Shock, Consecration, and Ursul's Vortex. They're then also pulling some abilities out of the talent trees, such as uh, Demonic Circle, Summon Gargoyle, Hunter's Mark, Hammer of Wrath, thankfully, Cyclone and Anti-Magic Zone. So, as you can see here, that's only the examples that they provided. Some of them are going to matter a bit more than others. I mean, sure, the flavor of auras is nice. It's good for the RPG part of the game. But, you know, having auras plus a BFA Paladin isn't going to save the BFA Paladin. Now, that said, having more baseline abilities, including more class-wide ones, well, that would be really good, especially because it would then free up some of the talent slots, which could then mean some more mechanics to talent into. So, overall, that could end up being a good bit better indeed. Now that said, I'd be remiss to mention that they did not mention the global cooldown changes of BFA. I mean, just last night, the Allied Race Death Knights had us in the office talking about, you know, a Lightforge Frost DK, and then it just ended up with us saying, yeah, I'd love to play that spec, but casting two offensive buffs in a row before hitting our attacks just feels rubbish, and it literally, like, kind of ruins the hero moment of that spec's overall rotation. Now, this is something I was a bit softer on earlier, but really, to be honest, with you, uh, I think the, the GCD changes were one of the worst things Blizzard ever did for class feel. I mean, realistically, hitting a buff and smashing your big damage spell feels good, but the GCD changes kind of slow that down, they ruin that moment a bit, they make the specs feel slower, it kind of homogenizes the pace of combat and makes the rotations feel more boring. Blizzard did not mention this during their class panel, so I'm a little bit worried about that, and I would implore them to revert those changes in Shadowlands and bring us back to where we were. So, yeah, sadly, no GCD updates, but seemingly I will say, a better direction with classes overall. Now, the thing is, we're obviously clearly very early in this expansion's development. The BlizzCon build, as an example, didn't have the class changes. It was very, very early indeed. It really did seem that way to people on the floor, just in terms of it basically feeling like level 50, but mostly BFA in a new zone, um, just in terms of the class feel. So it's obvious they're still working out a lot of things, and they don't want to publicly commit to uh, really much there. I mean, hell, take itemization. They essentially said nothing on that topic. So I think this is just because they want to wait and see for itemization how corrupted gear pans out, but more broadly they just, I think, wanted to have those discussions a bit more before they commit to things. Seemingly, while we did get our Shadowlands reveal, we are just a little bit earlier on in development in this instance. I do see how you could see that to be a bad thing, but I suppose also it does give us more time for feedback. So okay, that's the base class changes from 1 through 50. 50 through 60 class development though, that happens through the new Covenant system. And yes, that does mean that like with Legion and I suppose BFA as well, the higher 
and class editions do come from an external system, so they're kind of borrowed for the expansion. Now, this does open up uh, the problem of uh, kind of what leaving those systems uh, like behind feels like, but that is a problem that's three plus years off. So let's just talk about the Covenant. So you can join a Covenant. Now, this will get you two active abilities, one for your class and then a utility one that every Covenant member is going to get. Now, the utility options are basically just, they're all a thematic version of moving around faster while avoiding mobs, and they all seem pretty fun to use. Now, the class ones range greatly in their importance, seemingly. Blizzard showed us every Mage Covenant ability, so let's just go through those. Kirin Mages are going to get Radiant Spark, which causes their next four spells to do an extra 25%, 50%, 75%, and then 100% damage as Arcane. So, it's a pure single target one that, I mean, it'll make some insane Shattered Glacial Spikes. Now, this is clearly an important cooldown that will define a lot of gameplay, and you will play around, so it seems quite fun. Then, Contagion Bolt comes from uh, Mardraxis, and for the next eight seconds, it will cause your single target spells to do some splash damage. Then, Shifting Power comes from Arden Wield, and it's an AoE that increases haste for 15 seconds. And then, Mirrors of Torment comes from uh, Revendreth, and it's going to cause enemies to take damage and also get rooted for three seconds. So, that's what you're dealing with there. And they all do seem quite good, I suppose, but, like, they'll kind of shine in, you know, different ways in different scenarios. So, it's clear to me that there will be a right answer there for any given fight, but you've got to note that you can't really swap covenants easily. Blizzard will uh, let you do it for a cost, but they do intend to uh, basically have you pick one and stick with it. Now, their explanation for the balance here is that comparing a single ability and working out what is best, that's easy, but across the wide range of covenant power gains, it'll be a lot harder to have a right answer, and people will just sort of stick with their covenant. Now, when saying that, they were also referring to Soulbinds, which are our primary progression system through the Shadowlands expansion. So, each covenant basically has characters, and you can soul bind with these characters. Now, there is an upgrade tree that you'll work through with the soul bind, and that's going to have a mix of talents that you unlock, and then conduits that you sock it in. And, uh, yeah, they're basically mini talent trees, which I really do think is kind of cool. Now, those trees have slots for the conduits, and Blizzard have confirmed uh, through a later interview that the conduits are patch 7.3 relic-like consumables. So, talent tree, big yes. Consumable conduits. It, that's a massive no for me. It punishes experimentation. Guys, like, you made Major Glyph version 2 with Essences, and I think, uh, you know, bar the alt thing, it's a good system, right? You get a bunch of things to work towards, and you get a cool library of abilities to customize with, but with these being consumable, I mean, it just punishes customization. So, like, guys, what are you, tr what are you doing here? I mean, are you trying to get me to put my time into another game that's going to respect it more? Sometimes the WoW team just seem to have a kink for arbitrary player punishment, and those consumable content it seem like an example of that. Now, an example of a conduit was Enshrouding Mists, which would cause you to take 30% reduced damage when you fall below 35% HP, so seems pretty strong, and overall, the talent trees seem to have room for four such effects. Now, you'll be able to progress through your soul binds and then easily swap between soul binds, which I think is a good thing, and you can swap between them just like you swap between talents. So, overall, I'd say this. I think there's potential in that system, but I'd worry that it's overly complex, and I'd wonder if they would just not be better sort of focusing on, you know, designing the core of the class's 50 through 60 progression rather than coupling it with the Covenant system that much. Really, my worry here is that, you know, there'll be a right option or there'll maybe just be a play style that you'll love and that, that might, like, it might not mesh with a Covenant you like aesthetically, but so many of the Covenant rewards are actually aesthetic. So, I think that's going to be challenging. I think there are undoubtedly going to be problems that Blizzard will have to wrestle with as they further develop this system. Now, it is also worth noting here how little time they put into explaining the Covenant system thoroughly and going into detail. So it seems like, again, it's in very early development. Now, personally, I'd worry here that they're making a system that's a bit more messy than it needs to be, a bit more all-encompassing than it needs to be. Ian did say that over time, they don't want to add new systems on top of this, like, say, the Essences on top of the Heart and BFA. They'd rather just add, say, new soul binds in a new patch and offer players more horizontal progression, which I think, yeah, that pretty much would be a good thing. So with that, let's just run through the Kyrian abilities for the other classes, just to give you an idea. So rogues get echoing reprimand, and this gives you anima charged combo points that expire after 12 seconds, but are used for your finishers. Then hunters get a trap that gives them sight in an area, and then also removes LOS restrictions. And demon hunters get an AoE that shatters fragments. DKs get shackle the unworthy, which reduces damage taken from a target 
by 5% and then also does some damage with a cooldown reduction when the target is hit by rune abilities. Then monks get a cooldown refresh and a mastery buff on a two minute cooldown. Then paladins get a 30 yard AoE holy shock avenger shield slash judgment depending on their spec. Shamans get a mastery totem. Warlocks get a dot that gives them five targets if the uh, or five um, shards the target dies. And then finally warriors get spear of bastion which tethers the enemy to the spear. Now as you can see through that rundown you know many of those are quite nice. They're quite impactful. Some of them I think are more interesting than others though. And yeah, there is a bit of a concern here about the balance and I mean Ian said that balance wouldn't be a problem in the face of the all-encompassing nature of your covenant choices and how like there's the soul binds as well. But I'll admit I'm a bit skeptical of what Ian said there. Now, Blizzard's response concerning the, the sort of pigeonholing, it didn't really allay my fears so I'm a little bit worried that it's not going to play out in the way that they think it uh, will, that they're maybe not correct in their assessment. I mean even if hunters have soul binds that kind of make up in terms of power for the boring carrying ability, it just looks like a kind of dull playstyle. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of thinking here that Blizzard need to do about this system to actually get it to work. Now that said, I do want to bring a positive thing in. The legendaries could be a bright spot here. So you craft your own legendary using runes that you find in Torghast. And this means that the RNG of the Legion legendaries will not be present. So we're probably going to end up having a pretty enjoyable gameplay system there where, yeah, you're customizing your legendary, you're selecting what like new things you want for your class. I think that's really cool. So with all that covered, what's my overall opinion? Well, I'll say this. I love the covenants and all things, bar how they impact classes. I am a little tired of the external class systems and the potential pitfalls of Shadowlands' iteration of that. I mean, they're pretty darn evident. Now that said, making your custom cloak, your mount customization, the campaign, the characters, the aesthetics, the armor sets, I think that stuff's all fantastic RPG material that I love. I just think it's a shame that so much of the class gameplay is tied to it. And I've got to admit, sometimes I think that Blizzard's gameplay first value is applied a little bit bluntly, and maybe this is one of those times where they should just decouple those and kind of let, just let that player expression aesthetic stuff be what it is. But anyway, as for the rest of the class stuff, well, I think we just do need more details. That's really the core of this BlizzCon. I think Shadowlands is clearly earlier in development than Legion or BFA were at their BlizzCons. Um, and I mean, that's just at least uh, based on this BlizzCon showing. Now, a part of that is actually good. It does mean that feedback in these ideas can be provided before they're a lot more locked in. I think my experience of covering the BFA BlizzCon through beta, I mean, that certainly is going to mean that I'm going to be a bit more stern with my feedback. I'm going be a bit more focused on potential pitfalls because ultimately I love this game when I look at uh, the world of the Shadowlands these four or five new zones when I look at Torghast I see their content that I really think looks like it could be incredible right it looks beautiful I'm really happy to be away from Azeroth for a bit I actually like the core of what they're doing 1 through 50 with the classes at least in principle uh but, you know, I don't want those things to be sabotaged by systems that kind of, you know, torpedo an aspect of the game. And that's why, yeah, I am going to be a little bit more stern in the feedback. But just know that it's all in the service of me wanting Shadowlands to be as good as it possibly can be. So that the, the art, the content, the story, that all that stuff can shine. So, there you go. That's my thoughts on all of this stuff. Be sure to let me know what you think down below. And with that, I will see you next time.